Quiet on the set! Christine! Hello! Hi, Kevin! Your Christmas shopping? No. No, I'm not. No? No. You've probably done your Christmas shopping. I haven't even started. This is another booktube. Booktube? I think it's number four. I'm not sure. Number three and number four. I got myself into a lot here. I was writing a piece for Explorer Magazine on books that people have written about them pounding across Canada. And there's a good handful of them. You know, not a lot of people have done that, but uh, the people that have are, are amazing. Uh, it's a, what, 8,000 kilometer journey? And uh, what MacGuffin said it was a uh, 1 million paddle strokes? No, 10 million paddle strokes. Um, so, yeah, I, um, Alexander McKenzie uh, went across Canada in 1793, right? 1793? Sure. Okay, 1793 um, to cross the continent. And he started in, um, oh, what, what? It was in Quebec. It was in Quebec, not Montreal. It wasn't, uh, what, what, what do I got notes here? The Sheen, Quebec. And then he went across to Bella Coola in BC. Uh, so people have been trying to do that either that way or the other way. And um, some people have written books about it. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to just show the ones that I had on my, my, my bookshelf and I've read. There might be more, uh, but you never know. I don't want to miss that from there. All right. So, this first book, Canada by Canoe, John Van Temelen, right there, okay, really old book, um, it was, uh, da, 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 da. Um, well, he did this in 1967 for the centennial, and they went from um, BC to actually, uh, to Montreal to do, go to the expo, and it was a really kind of cool story, because the government, federal government, gave money to a group of, uh, a brigade of canoes. I think there was, uh, well, there was a canoe for every province and territory, except PI and Nova Scotia, I believe. I know PI didn't have one. And there was eight men per canoe, and they got paid to race across Canada to celebrate the centennial. And um, cool, uh, I'm, uh, you know, that, that's historic. And in fact, I think the Guinness Book of World Records still state that as the biggest canoe race ever. So... Poor John, uh, his group um, <laughs> didn't get the go-ahead to do it, so they're like, you know what, we're going to do it anyway and I'll get paid. So this is what the book's about. He was the bowman for it. This is an old copy, the newer copy you can get. I think Amazon has a newer copy. I think Friesen's Press actually reprinted it. And um, yeah, it doesn't look like this. This is like almost like a typewritten version of the journey with bad uh, photos. but. Good solid read. Uh, it's kind of neat. Good historic. Good good times at the time uh, the, in the late '60s. You can sense it. So I like that one. Uh, the next one is uh, Gary and Joni McGuffin. This is the original one. This is the reprint of it. And when they got married. They read. They met at an outdoor ed um, uh, college, Seneca College, I do believe, and uh, late 1979. So I know this because I actually know them. And um, they went across Canada uh, in 1983 after they got married. And the media called this the longest honeymoon in history. <laughs> so, yeah, they went across Canada. It took them two years. And they actually went from the Sheen. No, they actually went from the Tidewaters to the St. Lawrence where the Tidewaters come in. And they went uh, across in two years. And they actually went the other way. They, they didn't go to Bellico. They actually went towards Tuk Tuk Tuk. Uh, near the Burford's, Buford Sea, and um, so it's good to read. So it's it's kind of a young, enthusiastic story. It was written by Joni. Uh, it says Gary and Joni McGuffin. Um, should just say Joni McGuffin. That's personal. That's personally like she wrote the thing. <laughs> so I don't, you know, Gary, great guy, but Joni wrote the book. So uh, and. Um, yeah, uh, it, it's youthful enthusiasm going across Canada. They talk about the environmental issues along the way. They talk about the people they meet. I remember the one story, I think it was just after the, uh, the St. Lawrence or when they're leaving the St. Lawrence, um, someone stole all their gear. And uh, they were just into the trip and they had to re-gear to get across. It's a little fluffy written, I gotta say. Um, it's a nice read. Uh, but yeah, overall the books here I'm gonna talk about it's fluffy, okay, but worth reading. Coke Stop and Emo. Uh, so uh, Alec Ross, he did this trip in 1987 to 1989, and here you go.
Good guy, really good writer. He actually just lives down the road. Hello, Alex. And um, yeah, so he did this uh, this trip. At, at the, now, that book didn't come out until 1995, I believe, though. But I know he did the trip in, in 83, 84. And um, it's one of the well, most well-written books of all these because he is a writer. Uh, he wrote it in a style of journal, uh, his journal entries. And um, he actually wrote a lot in depth of what was going on with the people he met, the, what emotions he had at the time. Um, some people didn't like it. In fact, it got criticized pretty bad uh, uh, because of that. I got to say, I don't know. I like to read because it's, it wasn't from A to B and this is what we did. And... I think he upset some people because he did say the truth about some people he met he didn't like, which all the other people say they, they liked everybody. You can't like everybody. And he did talk about environmental issues just like McGuffins, but he was really hard on it, uh, really forceful on it. Uh, some great misadventures as well. He, uh, his canoe broke on the shores of Lake Winnipeg, and then he walked ashore not knowing what to do because he was solo. And uh, he found a toolbox, and he had enough stuff in that toolbox to fix his canoe to keep going. So yeah, I, I like to read. Uh, it was good. Old book though. This one, I forgot I even had this one. A Canoe Quest in the Wake of Canada's Prince of Explorers, that being Alexander McKenzie. And this guy loved Alexander McKenzie. Uh, John Donaldson, one day at a time, because I think he took five years. Did he take five years? I'm pretty sure he, he took five years. Yeah, he was 60, uh, lost his job, had to retire early, didn't want to, and um, yeah, so headed off to, uh, to to go across Canada, and he did that route from um, from Montreal all the way across, but he did it in sections. I think the first section it was Montreal to Sault Ste. Marie, I think, and Sault Ste. Marie to Winnipeg, Winnipeg to middle of Manitoba. Yeah, um, I you know what he went. He, then he also went back and did the Beaufort, Beaufort Sea section as well. So yeah, it's an order. It took him five years. This guy really thick into the history of Alexander McKenzie in Canada. Um, it's a solid book. Uh, he, he's done his homework. There's a tad of um, um, spirituality in it. Not much, but uh, there is. And yeah, I, I actually enjoyed it. it it's, it's, it's a long read. Um, maybe, you know, on a long winter night, get that book back out again. I'll give the guy credit for what he did at 60 by himself. Now, I want to mention um, uh, Frank Wolf. He's got these two books here. He did not write a book about the trip, but he mentions uh, his journey. He was the first to do it right across in one year. I believe it was 1994 he did that. And he mentioned that. I know he mentioned this book for sure, and I'm pretty darn sure he mentioned this book. This is a brand new book, and I'm actually going to do a review on this because I'm going to interview him on Thursday and do a whiskey fireside chat with him about this book. It's an amazing book, actually. So he went with a partner. Um, I remember this so solidly. I remember him going across. He was the first, and him and his partner go right across. It was Lance. I think his name was Lance. I'm not sure. But um, his partner came to me back in the day and asked me to be the ghostwriter for a book on this trip. And I didn't want to do that. I just said, well, you should write it. You did the trip. I wasn't into ghostwriting. And then he had mentioned that he had the copyright, um, legal copyright or ownership over the story. And that at his partner, that being Frank Wolf at the time, couldn't write about it. So probably that's not why, that's probably why Frank did not write a full book on it. He's made mention of it. Um, Frank Wolf, by the way, if you don't know, is an amazing writer, uh, amazing um, explorer. He's done incredible trips. Like throw the mic down uh, when you talk about him. Right, Christine? Right. I agree with that. Right. You know it's good when she agrees. Whew. All right, so Frank Wolf. Um, Max Finkelstein. Canoeing on the Continent uh, on the Trail of Alexander Mackenzie. So Max uh, had a job for the uh, Canadian Heritage Rivers. He actually got paid to go canoeing on the Heritage Rivers. Amazing. Good, good, good guy. Um, and he went, it took him three years to do this trip. And I think he went one way, and then the other, and then the other. Uh, sort of like, a, almost like a star uh, of it. I like this book. It's well written. Um, but if you want to know the, the whole history of Canada and McKenzie, like this guy's obsessed by it. So he's got a lot of good history in there about Canada, but also well written as well. It was controversial at the time when he did this. I remember this, good old Max, because if you look at it, is that a canoe or is it a kayak? Now that's a closed deck canoe. 
Um, it is. So, and it had a double blade, which was huge, hugely controversial then at the time, too. And I remember people saying, well, you didn't canoe across, you kayaked across. He did canoe. That's a proper canoe. It's a closed deck canoe, uh, similar to the Rob Roy version of the canoe. He also wrote another book, by the way, just to mention. He wrote two books. This one here wrote after that. It was about his um, journey with his buddy in northern Quebec following Epe Lo. And yeah, that's, I think, even a better read than Canoe in the Continent. Okay. One that's just out, 2017, I believe. They actually literally live down the road. <laughs> right? This is uh, Canoeing for Change, uh, Journey Across Canada. Glenn Green and Carol Vanden Engel. I can't pronounce, pronounce her last name. Do you know her last name? Okay, I'm going to try. Carol Vanden Engel. In Engel? Yeah? Okay. I can't see it. You can't see it. But you know them. They, they live down the road. I know, but I, I don't remember last names very well. Okay. Well, I can't pronounce them obviously very well. But yeah, a uh, very lovely couple. They decided uh, when they retired, they would actually uh, canoe across Canada. Now, they did it in all different sections. Um, I think it took them three years, maybe even four years, but they did it. Section here, section here, section here. But they did do the entire section uh, all the way to Nova Scotia. Um, and also Bella... 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 Bella, oh, Bella, Bella, Bella. What's the place in British Columbia? I can't talk anymore. Bella Cuda? No, I think so. Yeah, there. <laughs> it's called uh, Chain, uh, Canoe for Change because they wrote the book to promote uh, a program they, they run or help run to make sure all Canadians eat healthy. And um, it's based in, in Kingston. And what is it called? Food for Change? I think it's Food for Change. So that's kind of cool. It's it's good. Um, the only criticism I would say about it, um, like um, uh, Carol was the author, and then Glenn sort of has his little statements now and then. And it gets confusing. It's like you just want to just read one version of the story and then sort of quote the other person. So it goes back and forth a bit. Um, but still a good cause and a good read. The other one I do not have because it's on Kindle. Now you can get it a print copy, but you have to go up to Atacokan to get it, I guess. <laughs> Um, uh, there's only a few copies uh, done uh, for it. Mike Ranta, uh, if you don't know him, incredible man that actually has gone across Canada three times. And he's done a lot more paddling than that too. And um, he wrote a book on his one uh, trip in 2014, which I believe took him 240 something days. And then he went back to did again in 200 days. And I'm talking the whole thing, like Bellacuda to, um, to, um, Nova Scotia uh, and Ocean Ocean, right? Now, what he did though, he's a he's a very incredible speaker and he, he kind of knew that he's more of a better speaker than he was a writer. So he actually transcript his, his, his words, his speaking words into a book. So when you get the Kindle book, what you're reading is what he actually was saying and what he, whatever computer program wrote it down. It's a very solid book. Um, took a while for me to read, but Man, this guy has done amazing things. He's a really well-spoken person. I don't know if you ever uh, heard him on a podcast or the media or even presented. He wears a birch bark um, hat that he's made on his own. It is the story, but actually the name of the book is uh, Mike and Spitze. Spitze? 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 <laughs> Great Canadian Adventure. That was his dog. His dog passed away, Sally, but he has a new, new dog. And the dog went on all these trips with him. Yeah, you got to check it out. And if you don't read it, just check out anything. I mean, Jim Baird uh, interviewed him. Um, who else interviewed him? Uh, countless people have interviewed him on the podcast. And just listen to his words. They're, they're very magical. Very. Hmm. He's well spoken. And I am as well, right, Christine? <laughs> stellar, Kevin. Stellar. Stellar. Good stellar. Job. stellar job. Right. So yeah, I, I'm not sure if there's any other books out there uh, on paddling across or canoeing across Canada. Uh, if, if there are, just let me know. I know there's people that have done videos on it. Uh, they've done blogs on it. Um, they've actually done it and, and just to do it and haven't said anything about it for whatever reasons. And I know a lot of them out there that have done it. Um, I got to say, all of them that have done it are very unique individuals because you can't be... What the... I heard that. You... Meek. I'm, I'm being very serious here now. I was about to tear in my eye and... Meek. And she's shopping still. Now, what was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> Something about wonderful people. Yes. Oh, yeah. No. Um, all the people that have gone across Canada have to be very unique because you can't be normal if you're going to paddle 8,000 
uh, kilometers across, 10 million paddle strokes uh, across Canada. You can't be. I tell you, you can't be, especially if you do it solo. And if you do go on a trip like that, make sure you, you, you like your partner. If you go solo, make sure you're like yourself. Uh, I, I feel bad for Frank Wolf because um, uh, if you read about what he said, he goes, uh, well, my canoe par partner wasn't Hitler, but it was close. <laughs> that had to be a bad trip. I, I don't think they talked for the, the, la the last three weeks or something like that. Okay, thanks a lot for coming out. And all these books I'll put in a link. And I'm actually writing a piece for exploring this so there'd be a lot more detail, uh, controlled detail, <laughs> uh, on that blog. And I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you, I put that out on my social media pages. All right? Thanks a lot. There you go. Books, books, books everywhere. Thank you. Thank you. We're taking care of three dogs today. It's crazy. Oh, my goodness.